ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಸೊ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಾಗವತಂ ಕ್ಯಾಂಟೋ ಒನ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಟು ಡಿವಿನಿಟಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಡಿವೈನ್ ಸರ್ವಿಸ್ ಸೊ ಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಒನ್ ವ್ಯಾಸ ಉಚ ಇಶ್ನ ಸಂಹೃಷ್ಟೋ ವಿಪ್ರೌಮಹರ್ಷಣಿ ಪ್ರತಿಪೂಜಾವಚಸ್ತು ಉಪಚಕ್ರಮೆ Sutagaswami, the son of Roman, Ramaharsana. Ramaharsana, being fully satisfied by the perfect questions of, of the Brahmanas, thanked them and thus attempted to reply. Her. Yam pravajjantam anupetam apetakrityam. ದ್ವೈಪಾಯನೋ ವಿರಹ ಕಾತರ ಆಜುಹಾವ ಪುತ್ರೇತಿ ತನ್ಮಯತರ ಓ ವಿನೇದು ತಂ ಸರ್ವೂತರದಯ ಮುನಿಮಾನತೋಸ್ಮಿ ಶ್ರೀರ ಸತ್ಗೋಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಸೇಡ್ ಲೆಟ್ ಮಿ ಆಫರ್ ಮೈ ರೆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ ಫುಲ್ ಅಬೇಸೆನ್ಸಸ್ ಅಂಟು ದ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಸೇಜ್ Sukadev Goswami who can enter the hearts of all when he went away to take up the renounced order of life sanyasa sanyasa leaving home without undergoing reformation by the scared sacred sacred thread of or the ceremonies ceremonies observed by the higher cause costs his father vyasudev vasudev fearing separation from him cried out oh my son indeed it only the trees which were absorbed in the same feelings of of separation echoed echoed in response to the bereaved bereaved father ಸಂಸಾರಿಣಾಮಿ ಗುರು Let me offer my respectful obeisances unto him Sukha the spiritual master of all sages the son of Vasudeva Vyasudev Vasudev Vyasudev Vasudev who out of his of his great compassion of those gross material materials who struggle to cross over the darkest regions of material existence spoke the most confidential supplement supplement to the cream of vedic knowledge after having personally assimilated assimilated it by experience text 4 narayanam namaskritya ನರಂ ಚೈವಾನರೋತ್ತಮೀ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ವ್ಯಾಸ ತೋಜಯ ಉದೀರೇಫೋರ್ ರಿಸೈಟಿಂಗ್ ದ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಾಗವತ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಎವ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ವೆರಿ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಕಾನ್ಕ್ವೆಸ್ಟ್ ಒನ್ ಶುಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಅ ರೆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ ಫೋರ್ ಅ ಬೇಸೆನ್ಸಿಸ್ ಆನ್ ಟು ದ ಪರ್ಸನಾಲಿಟಿ ಆಫ್ ಗೋಡ್ ಹೆಡ್ Naranya Narayan Narayan unto Nar Narayan Nar Narayan Rishi Rishi the supermost human being unto mother Saraswati Saraswati the goddess of learning and unto Shri Vasudeva 
de Vyasudev, Vyasudev the Uta. Five, that's five. Munaya sadhu prashtoham bhavad viloka mangalam yatritha krishna samprashno yenatma suprasidati. O oh, sages, I have been justly questioned by you. Your questions are worthy because they relate to Lord Krishna and so are of relevance to the world's welfare. Only questions of this sort are capable of completing, satisfying the self. Next six. Savai pum sam paro dharmo yato bhaktir adoksha je ahai tu ki aprati hata yayatma suprasidati the supreme occupation dharma dharma for all humanity is that by which men can attain to loving devotional service unto the transcendent lord such devotional service must be un um, unmotivated and uninterrupted to completely satisfy the self text 7 Vasu Deve Bhagavati Bhakti Yoga Prayojitaha Janayati Asuvai Rajyam Jnanam Chayad Ahaitukam By rendering devotional service unto the personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, one immediately acquires causeless knowledge and detachment from the world. Text 8. Dharma Swanu Stita Pum Sam Vivakchena Kathasuyaha Not Pada Yet Yadiratim Shama Yeva Kevalam. The occupational activities a man performs according to his own position are only so much unuseless labor if they do not provoke attraction for the message of the personality of godhead next nine dharmasya hi apavargasya nartortayo pakalpate nartasya dharmai kantasya kamola bhaya hi smutah all occupational engagements are certainly meant for ultimate ultimate li liberation liberation they should never be performed for material gain furthermore according to sages one who is engaged in the ultimate ulti ultimate occupational service should never use material gain to cultivate sense gratification text 10 Kamasyanendriya Priti Labo Jiveta Yavata Jeevasya Tatva Dijnasa Narto Yas Jeha Karma Bhi. Life desires should never be directed toward sense gratification. One should desire one own only a healthy life or self. Physical. Preservation. Since a human being is meant for inquiry about the absolute truth, nothing else should be the goal of one's works. Text 11. Vadanti tat tatva vida tatvam yajnanam advayam brahmeti paramatmeti bhagavan iti sab. Shabjate. Learned transcendentalists who know the absolute truth call this non dual substance Brahmanam Brahman Paramatma Paramatma or Bhagavan Bhagavan. Text 12. Tachradhadhana Munayo. 
ज्ञान वैराग्य युक्त पश्यत्मा चात्मा भक्तश्रुत गृहत The seriously in, inquisitive. inquisitive students or sage or sage will equip well equipped with knowledge and detachment realizes the absolute truth by rendering devotional service in terms of what he has heard from the Vedant 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 Sutra text thirteen. अथ पुंभी द्विजश्रेष्ठ वर्णाश्रम विभागश स्वनुस्थित धर्म से संसिधिहरिषण Or best among the twice born, it is therefore concluded that the highest perfection one can achieve by distinction charging the duties prescribed for one's own occupation according to caste 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 divisions and orders of life is to please the personality of godhead text 14 tasmad ekena manasa bhagavan satva tampati hi Therefore, with one pointed attention, one should consistently hear about, glorify, remember, and worship the personality of Godhead, who is the protector of the devotees. Text fifteen. With sword in hand, intelligent men cut, cut through the blinding knots of re. re, Where we? re reactionary reactionary work karma by remembering the personality of godhead therefore who will not pay attention to his message text 16 susrusho shadha dhanasya vasudeva katharuchihi shyan mahat sevaya vipraha punyati ta nishevana O oh, twice born sages, by serving those devotees who are completely freed from all vice, great service is done. By such service, one gains affinity affinity for hearing the messages of Vasudeva. Text seventeen. Shunu Shunuatam Swakata Krishna Punyashavana Kirtana. Sri Krishna, the personality of Godhead, who is the Paramatma, Paramatma. Su- super soul in everyone's heart and the benefactor of the truthful devotees. Cleanness, desire for material enjoyment from the heart of the devotee, who has developed the urge to his to to hear his messages, which are in themselves virtuous when pro- properly properly heard and chanted. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you very much, Master Prem Prabhu, for your wonderful recitation and a particular meter, as well as we want to thank the little girl. Was it? What's her name? Devika. 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 Thank you, Devika. Very wonderfully, we have uh, get the translations through. So thank you. Thank you both. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.
Today we are going to study verse number six, and I'll bring the uh, the default view. I'll change that. Okay, we need translation. We need text. So before we go ahead, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Narayanam Namaskritya Naram Cheva Narottamam Devim Sarasatim Vyasam Tato Jayamudire Yet Nasta Praiso Badresu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya. Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhakti Bhavati Neshtiki So text number six Savai Pumsa Parodharmo Yato Bhakti Radokshaje Ahituki Apriti Hata Yayatma Supersidati Savai Pumsa Parodharma Yator Bhakti Radokshaje Ahitoki Apatahita, Ayatma Supersidati Savai Pum Sampa Rodharmo, Yato Bhakti Radokshaje Ahitoki Apatihata, Ayatma Supersidati Synonyms Sah that Vai certainly Pum Sam for mankind, Paraha sublime, Dharma occupation. Yataha by which bhakti devotional service adokshaje unto the transcendence ahituki causeless apratihata unbroken yaya by which atma the self supersedeti completely satisfied. Translation by His Divine Grace Shri Prabhupada and purport by His Divine Grace Shri Prabhupada. Shri Prabhupada ki jai. The supreme occupation, dharma, for all humanity is that by which men can attain to loving devotional service unto the transcendental, unto the transcendent Lord. Such devotional service must be unmotivated and uninterrupted to completely satisfy the self. Purport. In this statement, Shri Asid Goswami answers the first question of the sages of Nemisharanya. The sages asked him to summarize the whole range of revealed scriptures and present the most essential part so that fallen people or the people in general might easily take it up. The Vedas prescribe two different types of occupation for the human being. One is called the Pravati Marg or the path of sense enjoyment and the other is called Nevritti Marg or the path of renunciation. The path of enjoyment is inferior and the path of sacrifice for the supreme cause is superior. The material existence of the living being is a disease condition of actual life. Actually, actual life is spiritual existence or Brahma Bhuta existence, where life is eternal, blissful, and full of knowledge. Material existence is temporary, illusory, and full of miseries. There is no happiness at all. There is just the futile attempt to get rid of the miseries and temporary cessation of misery is falsely called happiness. Therefore, the path of progressive material enjoyment, which is temporary, miserable, illusory, is inferior. But devotional service to the Supreme Lord which leads one to eternal, blissful, and all cognitive life is called the superior qu 
quality of occupation. This is sometimes polluted when mixed with inferior quality. For example, adoption of devotional service for material gain is certainly an obstruction to the progressive path of renunciation. Renunciation or abnegation for ultimate good is certainly a better occupation than enjoyment in the diseased condition of life. Such enjoyment only aggravates the symptoms of disease and increases its duration. Therefore, devotional service to the Lord must be pure in quality, that is, without the least desire for material enjoyment. One should therefore accept the superior quality of occupation in the form of devotional service of the Lord without any tinge of unnecessary desire. Prudive action and philosophical speculation. This alone can lead one to perpetual solace in his service. We have purposely denoted dharma as occupation because the root meaning of the word dharma is that which sustains one's existence. A living being's sustenance of existence is to coordinate his activities with his eternal relationship with the Supreme Lord Krishna. Krishna is the central pivot of all living beings and he is the all attractive living entity, eternal form amongst all other living beings or eternal forms. Each and every living being has his eternal form and his spiritual existence and Krishna is the eternal attraction for all of them. Krishna is the complete whole, and everything else is his part and parcel. The relation is one of the servant and the served. It is transcendental, completely distinct from our experience in the material existence. This relation of servant and the served is the most congenial form of intimacy. One can realize it as devotional service progresses. Everyone should engage himself in that transcendental loving service of the Lord, even in the present conditional state of material existence. That will gradually give one the clue to actual life and please him to complete satisfaction. Om Gyanam Timarindasya Gyanam Jana Shalakaya Chakshuran Militam Yena Tatsmai Shri Gurve Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobhishtam Sthapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Sa Padantikam Andeham Shri Guru, Shri Utapada Kamalam, Shri Guram Vaishnavamscha, Shri Rupam Sagrajatam, Sahagana Raghunathan Vitam, Tam Sajivam, Sadvaitam, Savdutam, Parijana Sahitam, Krishna Chetanya Devam, Shri Radha, Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitam Sucha E Krishna Karuna Sindhu Deen Bandhu Jagat Pate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Shri Radhe Vrindabhaneshwari Vrishbhanu Sutte Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kalpataru Vyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhaye Vacha Patita Nam Pavnebhyo 
वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासारी गौर भक्त वृंदा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे सवै पुंसा परो धर्मो यतो भक्ते रथो क्षजे So this was from Canto two, from Canto one, chapter two, verse number six. When I'm reading through this verse and when I'm reading through various lectures and other commentaries from Shrimad Bhagavatam, I can very confidently say that this appears to be one of the verses which is the essence of all the Vedic literatures. And why should it not be? Because it is an answer to a question which was asked in chapter one. If you recall, in chapter one, 1.1.9, there was a question that was asked as to what is the essence of all the scriptures. Tattatatranjana yushmana bhavata yadvinishchitam umsam ekantaha shreyas. Ekantaha shreyas, absolute and ultimate good. Shreyas means ultimate good and ekantaha is translated here as absolute. Tannaha samsitam arhasi. Please, therefore, being blessed with many years, explain to us in an easily understandable way what you have ascertained to be the absolute and ultimate good for people in general. That was the question that was asked. And Shrasud Goswami is taking this opportunity and describing in three chapters, in these three verses, that verse number six, seven, and eight, he's going to describe the answer to this question. What is that ultimate good? So this is one answer. And the answer is, the supreme occupation for you, all humanity is that by which men can attain to loving devotional service unto the transcendental Lord. Such devotional service must be unmotivated, uninterrupted, to completely satisfy the self. And in the very next verse, we will also see that Sugusami Sugu or will be answering the another question, which is what is the essential recommendation of all Shastras? There also, it is spoken about rendering devotional service unto the personality of God, Hare Shri Krishna. One immediately acquires causeless knowledge and detachment from the world. And the following verse in text 8, again, it is described, the glories of devotional service is described, but in a negative way. It says, if one performs his duties properly, but fails to attain attraction to Krishna Katha, or hearing and speaking about Krishna, he will have acted uselessly. So we see these three verses, which we are going to read from today, are glorification of devotional service. And there are certain words here, which have been used. And they are very, very uh, important words. For example, adok shaje. Unto the transcendence. Now, this word Atok Shaje is Adok Shaj. I was reading through Srila Prabhupada's commentary and I noted that how Srila Prabhupada has beautifully explained Adok Shaj is, is God Himself. So, Krishna's name is Adok Shaja. 
and he mentioned that the the word alphabet ch and the word alphabet a a to ch these are the various alphabets in sanskrit language starting from a ending at ch and all the language that comes across is the combination of these words so you can combine many words but it's still beyond the god is beyond the expression of these many words therefore he is called adokshaja shri prabhupad notes that not by vocabulary we can understand what is the nature of god or in one word that god is beyond our material sense perception so how do you understand god if you cannot understand god by the material sense perception this verse is actually the answer the answer to this particular question how do you attain how do you understand god this is also a very beautiful verse that comes comes to our mind there are two verses that comes to our mind actually i have opened that i have not opened that verse right now i'm going to speak from bhakti rasamrit sindhu which also comes to our mind when you hear these words like apratihata hmm? and this verse is annabilashita shunyam gyan karma anavritam anukulena krishnanu anushilanam bhakti uttama so here the purport of this in purport if you see shri prabhupada has mentioned that bhakti has to be unmotivated bhakti has to be unmotivated and it it shouldn't contain any other desire the moment you desiring material benefits of bhakti then that's no more bhakti anna bilashita shunyam gyan karma anavartam it should be not covered by the desire of having fruitive results which can be derived from other processes also gyan and karm hmm? karma gyan karm adi by karm you can get results fruitive results by gyan also you want to merge in the spiritual brahman so that is also considered as material so it says annabilashita shunyam gyan karma anavrtam anukulena krishnanu in a favorable circumstances you must worship krishna anukulena krishna anushilanam following the footsteps bhakti ruttama that is the best bhakti or devotional service now bhakti is translated as devotional service it's not translated as devotion is translated as devotion service which is a verb it is a verb it's it's it is means an activity so bhakti is not a sentimental emotional feeling about god it is not a thing to be conducted in the mind as a thought process rather it is a practical activity which has to include involve all of our senses into the service of the lord ata shri krishna naam adi na bhavet gayam indriya sevan mukhe hi jeevadav swayam e visphurata da so this verse from bhakti rasamrit sindhu it's 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 spoken this is this is quoted by shri prabhupad many times even the words that we are going through is perhaps quoted by shri prabhupad everywhere no one can understand the transcendental nature of the name form quality and pastimes of shri krishna through his materially contaminated senses only one becomes spiritually saturated by transcendental service to the lord or the transcendental name form quality and pastimes of the lord revealed to him many people are trying to explore explore god through various processes but as we understand from the word adokshaja also by this verse we understand that 
not only that you cannot capture or explain God through the jugglery of words, you cannot even perceive him through your intelligence, through the senses, or through the material mind. Unless the material contamination is completely removed from the heart of the living entity, it is nearly impossible to understand God. And there is a process. The process is that it starts from, you cannot understand from the blunt senses. So, and the process is of devotional service. And we'll talk about what, are, what is that process that will ultimately take us to understand Krishna. What is that devotional service? Now, we know that living entity is going through this material nature from one bird to another. And Chaitanya Chaita Mita, this particular verse comes, which is beautiful. Samsara, Samsara Brahmite Kone Bhagavan Ajeev. Ah, this verse is Samsara Brahmite Kone Bhagya Ke Hatare Nadira Pravahe Yena Kashta Lage Tire. It says conditioned souls are wandering throughout the different planets of the universe, entering various species of life. By good fortune, one of these souls may somehow or other be delivered from the ocean of Nisians, just as one of the many big logs in a flowing river may by chance reach the bank. So this is the causelessness, causeless mercy of the pure devotee of the Lord, which can bring living entity to the platform of devotional service. Today, I was in the back garden of our house in Leicester. I'm staying in Leicester. And our neighbors have a very beautiful magnolia tree. Now, magnolia flowers are blooming right now. And you can see they're, they're growing big like this. And they're looking beautiful. So um, we were offering Aarti, morning Aarti to the deities at home. And I plucked these magnolia flowers to offer to the deities. Beautiful magnolia flowers. I brought them and offered to the deities. In a little while, I started to see there were some very small black insects coming out of these flowers. So I thought there are one or two. I took them in a plate, just collected them. They're very small, they can't fly. And as soon as you touch them in the defense, they become like stone, as if nobody can see that they are actually insects. So I threw them out of the window in the grass again. I came back and again, I saw there were many more insects. And I said, what's happening? Where are these insects coming from? And I then opened one of the magnolia flower. In there, I saw there was a whole colony of insects, these black insects. So I thought it shouldn't be the case that this insect is only this, because I plucked around 10 to 12 flowers to offer to the deities, to Guru Parampara, to Radha Madhav. So I took all the flowers back again, put them in the plate, I came out and started to see these magnolia flowers, what's happening inside. So of one of the magnolia flowers, I then opened the petals and started pluck, plucking them off. And there I saw so many of these black insects. They were very nicely situated in the, in the inner core of the flower. And the flower is very soft. Human beings cannot have such soft bed as these insects had. And there was beautiful parag, I don't know, it's called nectar, nectar from coming from, and fragrance coming from the interior of this flower. And I was seeing how nicely they are sucking into this nectar, surviving into these circumstances in a beautiful, nice way, and feeling very secured. Then I thought these insects are feeling themselves extremely secured. The lifetime of these insects might be a day, two or three. They've appeared and they will go away. And 
the lifetime of these flowers who are securing the life of these insects is not more than 12 or 14 days. In 14 days time, these flowers will get off the tree or maybe three weeks time. And the new flowers will come. And from a distance, when you see this tree, you find these beautiful magnolia flowers. You don't know there are insects inside. And you feel that these magnolia flowers will stay here forever. But they also die. Not only that the flowers will die, the tree which is holding the flowers will also die after some time, maybe 100 years, 200 years, whatever the lifetime is. So I was drawing this analogy of human being from this, from this event in the morning. I was getting this realization in the heart. Similarly, this living entity is coming to each of these magnolia flower, which is like a planet, and living into these planets, trying to find comfort, trying to dim the nectar with the help of material body, and not knowing that A, their own life is limited. B, that the life of the planet in which they are sitting is also limited. C, the life of the entire Brahman is also limited. And the one who has created this living entity called as Lord Brahma, his life is also limited. So I was thinking that how are we not like those insects? If we have not got this transcendent knowledge, we are living in complete ignorance, trying to suck the nectar, which is, does not exist in this material life. The words of Srimad Bhagavatam, the words emanating from the pure heart of the devotees of the Lord, who have realized the self, who have realized God, they are the only solace to give us the light because there is no way that by the human calculations and by the world jugglery, we are going to be able to see the truth beyond the sensual perception. And this truth can be seen by performing devotional service to the Lord. Devotional service, devotional loving service to the Lord. Now, there are various forms of devotional service. And when you perform this devotional service, you would receive a result which is beyond, beyond any results. Let's try and get to this verse. Yeah. So here is this verse in Chaitanya Charitamrita which says, Krishna kahe atma bhaje mange vishya sukha amrita chari vishya mange ai bada murkha. Krishna kahe atma bhaje mange vishya sukha. This living entity who is engaged in my transcendental service, at the same time he wants the opulence of material enjoyment. Vishay Sukha, Amrita Chari, he is leaving nectar, Vishmange, he is asking for poison. Hey, Bada Murkha, he is very foolish, he is very foolish. That's how Krishna is saying. But then he says, Kamalagi Krishna Bhaje, Paya Krishna Rasa, Kama Chari, Dasa Haite, Hai Abhi Lasha. When someone engages in Lord Krishna's devotional service for the satisfaction of senses and instead acquires a taste for serving Krishna, he gives up this material desire and willingly offers himself as an eternal servant of Krishna. He willingly offers himself as servant of Krishna. So, Then the next step is Tate Krishna Bhaje Kare Guru Rasevan Maya Jala Chute Pai Krishna Racharana 
the conditioned soul engages in the service of the Lord and simultaneously carries out the order of his spiritual master and serves him, he can get out the clutches of Maya and become eligible for shelter at Krishna's lotus feet. Krishna says, Sakrut eva prapanno yas tvamastiti yachate abhayam sarvada tasmai dadami etadvatam mama. Now, this verse is coming in Yuddhakand of Ramayan. In, in Ramayan, we have these various sections, and one section is Yuddhakand, which is the last part. The verse is 1833, Prabhupada has mentioned here. It says, Lord Ramachandra is saying, It is my vow that if one only one seriously surrender unto me, saying, My dear Lord, from this day I am yours and praise to me for courage. I shall immediately award courage to that person and he will always remain safe from that time on. From that time on. So, I wanted to go through some aspects of devotional service, but time is actually clicking through and I could only set the context for, uh, for the devotional service. So maybe another five minutes, I'll try to see what I can do. Uh, this is uh, from Chaitanya Chaita Mitha. Uh, you can see this is called, this is from Madhya Leela, Chapter 22, Process of Devotional Service. If you do get time, please read through this beautiful chapter. Step by step, Lord Krishna is taking us through the process of devotional service. Initially, he states that if one follows one ashram system, principles of ex regulated principles of the four social orders and spiritual orders, then they are they would be uh, able to render transcendental service to Krishna, or else they will fall into hellish conditions of material life of death and birth. And then he goes on saying that. Krishna is compared to sunshine and Maya is compared to darkness. So if you serve Krishna, then automatically you will be released from the darkness of this illusion. And philosophically, he's, he's trying to establish that uh, living entities suffering due to bad association can gradually come out of this intense uh, ignorance by engaging himself in intense devotional service to Krishna, whether, uh, therefore, one shouldn't, one shouldn't desire material enjoyment or merging into the absolute truth if one wants to take the shelter of lotus feet of Krishna. So, Yes, it says, by good fortune, one becomes eligible to cross the ocean of Nisians. And when one's term of material existence decreases, one may get an opportunity to associate with pure devotees. By such association, one's attraction to Krishna is awakened. Is awakened. So like that, this, this particular chapter describes a lot of details of um, of devotional service. Now this, there is obviously a lot more to it in Nectar of Devotion. Nectar of Devotion talks about uh, uh, about the process of, of uh, attaining love of Krishna. Attaining love of Krishna. And in that method, it is mentioned that the, one of the most difficult part of attaining love for Krishna is anartha nivritti. But one can get rid of this anarthas, unwanted desires in the heart through the process of devotional service. And it is not so difficult if we take shelter of the holy name of the Lord. I'm just looking at that verse, which, which is able to give us that. Yeah. So if you look at Bhakti Asamra Sindhu, there's a beautiful verse. 
And I'm just going to uh, recite the verse and read the translation, but I'm sure there'll be many more opportunities in the, in the future classes to discuss these subject matters in detail, because these subject matters, as we read in yesterday in the class, that the subject matters, questions related to the subject matter of Lord Krishna are transcendental, and they can bring about the transformation in the heart of people because they are absolute. And when such questions and answers will be discussed, the result is the purification of the heart. And when the heart is purified, then we can see Lord Krishna within our hearts. So this verse is Adav Shuddha Tata Sadhu Sangatta Bhajan Kriya Tato Anartha Nivritti Syat Tata Nishtaruchish Tata in the beginning, there must be faith, shraddha. Then one becomes interested in associating with pure devotees, which is sadhu sangha. Thereafter, one is initiated by the spiritual master and executes regulative principles under his orders. So that is called bhajana kriya. So with the help of devotees association, one gets engaged in the devotional service of the Lord. Thus, one is freed from all unwanted habits, which is anartha nivritti, and becomes firmly fixed in devotional service, which is nothing but nishta. And then from that stage, he goes to the next stage where he develops taste for it, which is called ruchi. This is, therefore, one develops taste and attachment. So, adau shuddha tatau sadhu sangha, ta bhajan kriya, tatau anartha nivritti asyat, tatau nishta ruchish tataha. After that, it says, Atha sakti tato bhavas tata prema buddhyan chati sadhakanam ayam premnaha pradur bhave bhavet kramaha, which is this is the way of sadhana bhakti, execution, execution of devotional service according to the regulative principles. Gradually, emotions intensify, and finally, there is an awakening of love. This is the gradual development of love of Godhead for the devotees interested in Krishna consciousness. Now, we see that there are two phases of devotional service. There is one phase of devotional service for the conditioned souls who will always be following the regulated principles to reach to a stage where a spontaneous love for Krishna arises in their heart, where, which means that they have no other desire left but to serve Krishna spontaneously and without any stopping, continuously, sporadically. It should always be there, the desire. There's no more the desire of enjoying, enjoying the matter, enjoying the senses, enjoying anything and everything. Rather, the desire has now shifted to serving. And that service is a spontaneous service. There's no thinking, just like, the spontaneity of the gopas. They don't have to train themselves on how to play with Krishna. Gopis, they don't have to play and train themselves to learn how to love Krishna. We have to. So, once the sadhakas reach to the stage of anartha nivritti and come to the stage where they are then beyond the regulated principles, which means they come beyond the point of thinking about themselves, but they only think about Krishna continuously and intentionally, but not in an animical way. Like Kamsa, Shishupal, they were continuously thinking about Krishna. They also get liberation. What kind of liberation they get? They get merged into the Brahman. So, but at the same time, but because they are not favorable, but look at the gopis, look at the uh, at the, uh, the Parents, the conjugal love, they are favorably thinking about Krishna constantly. So living entities who gradually develop uh, the, the attitude of serving Krishna and get rid of all these anathas from the heart of this, of this enjoying propensity, then they are awarded a situation where they can follow in the footsteps of the Brajavasis or the uh, the denizens of the Goloka Vrindavan, and by that doing that, they can perfect their life 
and that call that bhakti is called raga nuga bhakti sadak sadhana bhakti and then spontaneous love raga nuga bhakti now this is a, a discussion which is slightly higher and we'll take up in some other classes but for now i'll just say uh, so in this particular verse धर्मो यतो भक्ति uninterrupted to completely satisfy the self which means the lord himself and he satisfy the ourselves we will be satisfied so the first point is to become sadhana bhakti follow regulated principles come in the association of devotees perform devotional services purify our desires and gradually when we come to the platform of nishtha ruchi prema that time will develop this spontaneous unmotivated uninterrupted service to the lord and shri chaitanya mahaprabhu has said and even i was reading through the purpose of shri prabhupad he says that those devotees who come to the stage of perfection in this lifetime here on the planet earth they would never show that they have reached the perfection they will continuously follow the regulated principles live that exemplary life of role modeling at the same time internally they are continuously meditating upon that relationship which they have developed with krishna and follow that brajavasi that uh, bhakta uh, uh, who is eternally in a relationship with krishna falling into his footsteps thus doing performing raga nuga bhakti internally but performing sadhana bhakti externally i'll just stop at this point and invite any question or comments on this particular verse or subject matter hari krishna hari krishna prabhuji dandava pranams agla shubhapad thank you for a wonderful class it is very difficult subject matter that you've tried to cover devotional services the crux of everything in uh, in 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 our uh, sampradaya and uh, and of course you've tried to cover it in uh, 35 minutes which is very difficult and also it's a mountain so but thank you for a very nectarian class uh prabhuji um in canto 7 um prahlad maharaj defines the nine processes of devotional service mm-hmm. as you know uh, shravanam kirtanam smaranam pada sevanam mm-hmm. archanam vandanam dasyam sakyam atmani vedanam which is then further expanded upon in the nectar devotion into 64 I think, yeah. many of those branches are uh, of course devotional service in the mind um could you qualify your statement where you said that devotional service cannot be offered in the mind also we have uh, uh, great examples of great acharyas and uh, sants who've done mansik seva um and offered devotional service offerings in the mind they've had their fingers burnt because of the offerings in the mind mm-hmm. they've done seva so could you qualify your statement that devotional service cannot be offered in the mind yes true so basically what shri prabhupada has mentioned uh i've read through his commentaries he has mentioned that devotional service cannot be taken cheaply so condition souls when they try to imitate the elevated liberated perfected devotees then that should not be done so for condition souls one has to follow the regulated principles of of controlling the senses not that senses are not controlled and one is acting trying to act in relationship with krishna let's say as a gopi but otherwise his heart is filled of sexual desires now this is called prakrita sahajya which means you have made it so sahaj so simple 
the activities of Krishna and his pastimes that one is uh, fooled into being him, himself as one of the elevated devotee of Krishna. Now, Lord Chaitanya, as a sannyasi, I'm repeating Srila Prabhupada, I've just read it through his commentary and lecture. He's saying the Lord Chaitanya, as a sannyasi, would never come closer to any body of opposite sex. At the same time, he would, he would talk about love of gopis for Krishna as the highest rasa, and he would relish that all the time in his mind or in his, in his internal, internal consciousness, which comes to show that the external material feelings, emotions, cannot be taken as the true emotions of love of Godhead. Therefore, to avoid us falling into the pitfall that I'm a very elevated devotee and now I can do my bhajan on my own without any sangha, becoming a babaji, going sitting in a vindavan, and uh, I can perform manasik bhajan. So this is not, it's not a recommended path for the conditioned souls. For those who are already perfected, they can do this. Therefore, this kind of bhajan, which is mansik mental bhajan, can be done by those only who have perfected their lives and that too, they do not exhibit that. They do not exhibit it. They do not make it so cheap. Because just imagine a lover is making his relationship with his lover very cheap and telling everybody, oh, I do this, I do that. They're very internal, intimate pastimes. Therefore, you won't see many, very examples in, in the present context. And Srila Prabhupada has warned us again and again that there was this devotee who wanted to chant, uh, chant uh, bhajan on his own. And he went to Navadip. Maya Prabhupada told him not to do though. You know, don't, don't, don't try to attempt this. But he did. And after some time, he was never to be seen. So such kind of activity will not give us uh, the liberation that we are seeking of anartha nivritti. I hope I have tried to explain this. So that devotional service, which is performed in the mind, is also mentioned in Bhagavatam only for those who have already crossed the devotional service of regulated principles. And therefore, that aspect of devotional service is an aspect of spontaneous devotional service performed at Raganuga platform. Does that make clear, Prabhu? Yeah, so it was a qualification issue. I think, I, I think you, you, should, you said your statement was that you cannot perform devotional service in the mind. But uh, our... our um, Clearly, one can. It's just a question of the, the level at which your, your sadhana is mature or not. So it was a qualification of maturity rather than uh, not possible. It's, it's these uh, vidhi against the nishets. So the, following mm -hmm. the regulatory principles are nishets, but by following them does not make you devotional. Uh, an atheist can be following the, the, the four regulatory principles, but that doesn't make him devotion, a devotee. So active uh, engagement in devotional practice makes you a devotee, not uh, observing the regulatory principles per se. Mm, no, so the, there is uh, the regulatory principles are the, are the roadmaps, are the way to go towards Krishna. Regulated principles followed for the sake of regulated principles has no meaning. Regulated principles are followed to achieve the spiritual goals. One ashram system and the one and ashram system. This is a part of the regulated principles. Now this is followed so that as we grow in the age, we take sannyas order of life in order to achieve the dharma, uh, the goal of dharma. Now we have our senses also. We control our senses in order to please Krishna, not for the heck of it. That is mystic yogis, they can do that and they'll achieve liberation, they'll achieve mystic siddhis, 
but devotees therefore it is says no other motive but to please krishna that becomes devotional service any activity if it is done without the intention of pleasing krishna is not a devotional service therefore devotional service is something that we do only to please krishna any regular principles otherwise whatever we do has no meaning to it in relationship with krishna now going back to that discussion for a conditioned soul the bhakti is active participation of senses and the part of thinking the mental seva is exceptionally done for those who cannot do physically the seva actively by their senses the idea is to purify the senses so for 99.999% of the people in the world the bhakti is described by shri prabhupada as a service thinking also is an activity not denying that thinking is not an activity but with the pure senses one can achieve that so it is very it is limited to very few those liberated souls who has come to the point of control of senses mind and then they are able to perform those kind of activities is possible as you rightly said but it's restricted therefore for common people we say not possible don't try to go in that path because all you will do is just fall down propa has mentioned you sit you sit on your own all you will six all you will think about is where is money where is sex that's what conditioned soul will think unless they are purified and submitted actively involved in the devotional service so just that point i wanted to make thank you prabhu sorry for taking up so much time no no it's very important point prabhu uh, i would or yes, sampradayas perhaps, perhaps you can sampradayas who are who are sahajya sampradayas and prabhupada has inoculated us by his very powerful philosophy so don't we don't get victimized by such uh you know such philosophies which will take us away from the original devotion service sense of devotion service what i was going to say is uh, perhaps uh, uh, if, uh perhaps you can speak to him and then it might be worthwhile splitting up and doing if you wanted to cover devotional service as a subject matter it probably needs two or three sessions to cover it nicely and properly because i think you it was uh, there was a difficult task you had to try and cover it in 35 minutes i think it's a no, very so i think vast and deep subject for for <laughs> us to i think we'll get many opportunities shlokas after shloka will talk about devotion service and as we continue to attend it will all unveil itself gradually we will feel that that will happen there are many many such shlokas which is going to come and i think all the devotees will make efforts to to bring upon this this sub, nice subject matter and it is it is discussed in great length prabhu as we go on reading the shrimad bhagavatam perhaps you already know it so <laughs> okay if there is any other question or uh comment i am just looking at a chat here mm. yes prabhu ji there is a question mm. uh from one of our devotees um basically he or she is asking was the shloka from 4.21 mm so Which i don't shloka? i don't remember really but there's a question cc 421 aha uh-huh. so Shloka CC number 4, CC 421. Okay, Hare Krishna you. Prabhuji, that was yeah. me, sorry. There were some very nice shlokas you were st- sh- showing and I uh, couldn't remember them once the screen changed. So I was oh. asking, uh, they, they said something like, uh, we'll be happy if you're doing service or Krishna will always look at you if you're uh-huh. doing service, something other. So uh, but think, I'll, Prabhu, yeah. you, you read uh, from, from Chaitanya Chaitanya Mitha, you read uh, the devotional service part i'll tell you 
it is uh, Madhya Leela and the chapter is 20, 22, chapter 22. So, Sri Chaitanya Charta Madhya Leela, chapter 22. The chapter is entitled Process of Devotional Service. This, this chapter is spoken by Lord Chaitanya about the glories of devotional service. That is what it is. I can show you the screen here. You can see it again. Process of Devotional Service, Chapter 22, Chaitanamrita Madhalila. And here are these verses. You'll find that verse between these verses. Excellent, Prabhuji. Thank you. That's uh, very, very helpful. Thank, Thank you, Prabhuji. And Prabhuji, there is one more question. Um, it says, Hare Krishna Prabhuji, can you please explain what is Panch, Panch... Pancharatrika Vidhi and Bhagavat Vidhi? Yes, Prabhuji. Thank you. So basically, uh, there are two aspects of bhakti or processes. One is uh, Pancharatrika Vidhi, wherein we are worshipping the deities. We are engaged in worshipping the personal form of the Lord who has descended in the form of the deities. So we are regulating ourselves through the active, uh, active engagement of senses uh, in the service of the deities by cooking for them, for dressing for them, for bathing them, by offering them mantras, by offering them prabhogas and doing all kinds of service and stay engaged from morning 4.30, 4 o'clock till late, late 9.30. And everything can be working around them. So like that, our senses are completely engaged. Those who are pujaris here, they know it. So how purifying is that service? And second is Bhagavat Vidhi, where you hear about Srimad Bhagavatam, about Lord Krishna from the, from the realized souls. And both of them are important. Part of the Gorya Madhav Sampraday. We are in that sampraday and we are following both the vidis with equal intensity. I hope that makes it clear. Yeah, thank you, Prabhu. Okay, so I, I think we are, uh, we are already at nine o'clock. I'm sorry we have transgressed the time limit today again. And uh, I beg your forgiveness. Thank you very much. One chakal taru bhyascha ke paas Thank you, Prabhuji. Thank you, Prabhuji.